Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Welcome back to the channel. We have just finished watching Dr. Stone New World episode 20. And man, they set up the next arc, really next season, in a very, very interesting fashion. Yeah, hey man, we say it all the time. What a time to be a doctor, or what a time to be an anime fan. But what a time to be a Doctor Stone fan too. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, this episode, I was wondering where they were going with it before we started it. I mean, like I was wondering where where they were gonna go with it, just because the conflict was over last episode. Yeah, so I was wondering like. I'm pretty sure this season's going to be, or the second part of the season is going to be 11 episodes as well. I'm wondering what's left. They set up the next arc already. Yeah, already. Like, I'm not going to lie. This was a fantastic episode. And like you said, the alley oop they just threw quite literally is crazy as hell just because it's sky high to the moon. But looking at this episode, like, it was really interesting because for starters, Top two, the way she's coming off, it seems like she may have joined the kingdom, but that wasn't even the most interesting thing. We got so much information dropped on us. Yeah, like, in terms of her joining, it's basically a lock that she is. They just didn't, like, officially ask, I don't think. Yeah. But it, she, she, let's let's keep it a stack. She's in the kingdom of science now. Like, it really and makes you wonder, broke. like... Yeah, that's broken as fuck. And it really makes you wonder... Like, what's good with Maz and uh, the other dude? Like Yeah, Hyoga. Hyoga, yeah. Especially Maz, because Hyoga's like, Hyoga's one thing. They already work together and shit. He's essentially locked in. Yeah. But Maz is a different story, because he was jolly like, trying to slime niggas. I don't know about that one. Well, maybe this new character makes it to where, like, he could keep Maz in check. I don't know, like... He kind of effortlessly threw Top 2 and Kohaku out the way when he thought Genro was his master. Yeah, now, in terms of that, like, I don't know if he's just doing that to them if they're actually fighting. Yeah, I don't I don't think he is. I don't think But the nigga's strong as shit regardless. And for some reason, Genro looks like some other nigga, and this nigga's basically pledging loyalty, which... W play by Ginro. They talk about he acting shady again. Like, fuck that, mm. nigga. Get that nigga on our side. Type shit. Type shit. Man, I'm not going to lie. Like, the Kingdom of Science just got deeper with her addition. And I'm not going to lie. Like, I feel safe with them having pretty much any type of op if it's someone like Maz. Just because her and Kohaku, I feel like it's hard for them to lose now. Yeah. Assuming there's just one and not two. But... Looking at everything else that happened in this episode, like we said, they dropped information on us. Kind of some golden one, too. We got, I think, one of the biggest bombs was the fact that there's multiple petrification beams that are all throughout the land. Yeah, That shit is actually really interesting. There was a lot of them. Like, there was probably, like, if I had to guess, there was probably, like, a hundred. At least. You think they came raining down from the moon from the Y Man? Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Like, my thing is, how long was the nigga on the moon for? And how many of those came raining down type of shit? Because it's like, how would a nigga still be on the moon after this many years? Sanku himself came back after like 3,000 years or some shit. Or whatever the fuck it was. So it's and, like, oh, how, who is still up there? And what's interesting is because who started the petrification beam? Because it's like, I would assume it's the white man, but at the same time, I don't think the petrification beam came from the moon when it started. It looked like it started from Earth. Like, it was set off from Earth. And actually, you know, it kind of feels like he's just raining down. Like, all of these came raining down recently, it seems like. Mm-hmm. All of the rings. It's, it's almost like they like made it smaller and more like versatile. Almost like I, like it's like the first one, the OG petrification was one thing, and then over time they like developed it into this little like weapon type shit and just put a bunch we, of them home. Which I don't know why I, they would change it, but still. 
My my thing is, what do they gain from throwing them down? Because it's like you don't petrificate, you don't petrify or petrify anyone just by throwing it. So it's like. I don't know. It's like, I feel like they would already know how to use it because they made it. So it's like, I would assume that when they were repeating Senku's transmission, that's where it gets kind of interesting. Like, is it an accident that it was a ring rainstorm or a beam rainstorm? Or was that on purpose? And if it was on purpose, are they like kind of playing Hunger Games where it's like they're just watching people from above trying to see how they were going to use it? I think it was kind of like that, but more in the sense of, like, making people use it on each other rather than, like, seeing how they were going to use it. Like, I think it was kind of in that sense. Like, I think they they dropped them hoes, used them off rip, but then it's like whoever finds it, like, they're probably going to weaponize it because human nature or some shit like that, whatever the fuck they thinking up there. You could say it's like... You could say it was guns before guns came to the Stone Age. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's like military might, and niggas are going to use it for war. And they're just going to petrify the damn selves. Now, I'm wondering, and obviously we're not going to get this anytime soon, but I'm wondering why the fuck is why man still trying to petrify niggas? Like, yeah, that's like, it, it doesn't really make much sense to me, let alone how the fuck they're still up there after all these years. Like, unless they have a dead-ass civilization on the moon, because that would be fucking ridiculous. Type shit, and vice versa, like, if we're running with the idea that the Y-Man is the creator of the ring devices and all that, which, theoretically, it makes sense, just knowing that the rainstorm came most likely from the moon. It, why is he repeating it over and over and over to Senku, and vice versa? What about all this time before? Like, it kind of feels weird, like, it almost didn't feel like... It almost feels like they're trying to learn from Senku. Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't, like... Because if they had all that power and shit to just rain down petrification beams, let alone if they still have a big one, but we don't even know about all that, but... Yeah. If they have all that power to rain down petrification beams and shit, you think they know how to use it. So it's like, why go through all of this trouble with Senku and them like he like they they took over this island they got the beam and now this nigga is using they're clearly keeping a close eye on Senku like they literally used his voice to send a message so it's like why go through all of that trouble to get rid of them if you could just use it Mm -hmm. I don't know now there's some things that's not clicking right there you know something that just came to my mind too because they are going to the moon. That's 100% locked in. But I wonder how easy that's going to be for them. Because I don't want to question it. We saw how they just repaired their ship in half an episode. But And at this point, I'm not going to question the kingdom doing anything with speed. But on the other hand, a rocket is still a rocket. Even in modern day, that still takes forever. So it kind of has me wondering, like, could you see the trip to the moon being like a background thing to the story on some like not end game but like probably end of the next season? And yeah. everything else is probably like just another similar arc to this arc going to another island. I don't know about everything else being similar to this arc. I don't know necessarily what I can see there, but I do think this rocket process is not going to be quick. Like yeah. It could be potentially two seasons before they actually finish the rocket. And see, the reason why I ask is because of the whole... The fact that we got the information that the petrification rings came raining down. They didn't have to tell us that multiple rings came raining down. It could have just been one. They went out of their way to show that multiple rings came raining down to multiple places. For all we know, it's all over the world with it. I feel like it would be kind of almost a waste to bring that to the world now and not do anything with it if you go straight to the moon. Like, I kind of want to see them encounter another ring user. That's one thing that was kind of, uh, like, exciting about seeing that there was more than one was that we were already mm-hmm. thinking when they when they brought back Ginro, like, 
uh, we brought it up in the episode. Like, if you can just do that and heal somebody who is injured, just petrify them and then unpetrify them and they're healed, then they don't have to worry about niggas getting hurt anymore. Yeah, but literally. What about if someone else has a beam and you have a beam? Now what happens? So that would that makes things a lot more interesting going forward with the conflict. Then all of a sudden we're going to the moon. I don't know when that's going to happen, but I'm hoping there's at least a little more before that. Yeah. Shit. Shit. All in all, though, this was a really nice episode. We say it all the time. All information is golden information. And in this episode, it was golden like shit. And, of course, Dr. Stone, they progressed the story like shit, too. But they always do it in a great way. And it was really fantastic to see our boy Genro again. It was always a vibe to see him on screen. But... All in all, what would you rate this episode? I'm giving this episode a 10. We said it while we were watching. This was a One Piece-ass episode. The Straw Hats on yeah, the Boat. It, it was, was a Straw Hats on the Boat episode. But one thing about those Straw Hat on the Boat episodes is they're not just the Straw Hats on the Boat. They give us some information or something or something happens or we get an There's update about the world people. or something. Like They literally did that in this episode. Like They connected the next arc so beautifully, in my opinion. Like, it was a beautiful like, relay. Hell yeah. I'm, I'm giving this episode a 10. That was fire. I'm right there with you. Like, this was a One Piece essence. We're, that's going to have to be coined. But this was a One Piece-esque type of episode. And I'm not going to lie. It was just fire because, like you said, they didn't have to go out of their way to show everyone outside of the Kingdom of Science, but they did. And the best thing about it was how they updated the world. They brought back more lore as well as now updates to the point where now we're questioning, even though they're going to the literal moon, we're questioning what about what's left on Earth just because of the information bombs they dropped, which was not even intended to do that. That's something that usually only one, or I'm not going to say only, but that's usually something that One Piece always does, and it's always amazing to see it done nice in another anime. So I'm right there with you. This was a 10 out of 10 episode. Hell yeah, I ain't gonna lie, that shit, woo! Talk about bombs on bombs, but hey man, let us know what you thought about this episode of Dr. Stone. With that being said, make sure you hit the like button on this video for Dr. Stone and for us, we really appreciate it, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you hit the big red subscribe button as well, and turn on that post notification bell so you don't miss the next episode or any of our other videos. We drop straight anime gas on this channel, so make sure you tap in with us. With that being said, make sure you guys click the description as well. Two links will be waiting for you. One will take you to all of our socials, Sons of Tokyo, on every platform. The other one will take you to our Discord. You feel Come me? on in. Come on in. You know what I'm saying? Come vibe out with us. But, uh, yeah, man. With that being said, SOT out.